right, thank you and good morning. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. So I am presenting this work from Kenya on behalf of my co-authors uh, that you see there. In particular, uh, Dr. Kirwa uh, was not able to travel due to visa issues. So this is really his work, uh, and he's done a terrific job with it, and, and I'm just here as his representative. Uh, so, of course, this audience knows the importance of household air pollution and the very high burden of uh, morbidity and mortality associated with it, uh, and, and also the uneven distribution of, uh, of this uh, important health hazard across the world. Um, and, you know, there's, there's been a really th this huge surge in research on the, the health effects of uh, household air pollution. And, um, you know, one of the interesting things is that it's, the results seem to be very location specific. Uh, so we're still at that point where, where we're doing a lot of location specific research. Uh, and this is the, the work in Western Kenya in, in uh, two rural villages uh, I'll, I'll show you. And we were particularly focused on the cardiovascular uh, health impacts of, of household air pollution. So I'm going to focus on household air pollution and blood pressure uh, because that was some of the more interesting findings from this study and also because that's my area of expertise. Uh, so there's growing evidence uh, in the literature that ambient air pollution is associated with higher blood pressure uh, as well as with uh, increased risk of incident hypertension. And there's uh, emerging evidence uh, that biomass fuel and household air pollution are linked to higher blood pressure, uh, particularly in low and middle income countries. Uh, yet there's very few studies actually evaluating whether a stove intervention is associated with uh, lower blood pressure. So the goal of this study was to examine the impact of a cook stove intervention on markers of cardiovascular and respiratory health, uh, and also whether this stove intervention uh, could reduce indoor levels of fine particulate matter, or PM 2.5, and carbon monoxide. So we recruited 99 women in two rural communities in Western Kenya. Uh, these are the communities of Turbo and Kaptagat. Women had to be 18 years or older, living in the community for more than six months, uh, non-smokers, and having reported spending four hours or more per day in the kitchen. Uh, usually it's a so, uh, separate small structure, as you can see here. So here's the, the house and the, the separate kitchen. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you that the, the kitchen design varies a little bit between uh, the two communities we were in, uh, but this is sort of a typical uh, image from the area. Uh, so the uh, uh, two study sites, uh, oops. Gotcha. So uh, Turbo is one of the study sites, uh, so, so the nearest uh, uh, bigger town is, is Eldoret, and uh, uh, Kaptaga, uh, uh is this dot right here, so one of the smaller sites, and, and this was built off the, the local AMPATH uh, program. Uh, and the two study sites are, are somewhat different, so uh, Turbo uh, uh, is, is more peri-urban, there's a mix of uh, economic activity. Uh, with uh, uh, many uh, of the uh, uh, people in the area involved in small businesses or uh, merchant activity, but there's also farming, and so it's mixed use. It's a little denser, um, in, 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 and the housing design is a little bit different. In Kaptagat is more rural, and the size of the individual properties are, are larger, uh, and the, the kitchen designs are, are typically a little bit bigger uh, with more ventilation. So it's sort of interesting uh, to, to see that even within this local region, there's pretty, um, uh, some important differences between study sites. So this was a pre-post study, and I'll just put out right away that th this is not a randomized study, this, there, there's, this is not a placebo controlled or, or any control group. Uh, this was, can we go into a community and uh, uh, give them a stove and see if you know, that improves their health and reduces exposure. And the stove intervention uh, was this locally developed uh, Eldoboma stove. Uh, this was developed in Eldoret and uh, tested locally. Uh, and, and so this was, um, 
you know, designed by the people in the communities that we were uh, uh, trying to work with. And so we had measures at baseline and then one month and six months uh, post the intervention. So this is a vented stove and it, it rated highly in terms of uh, uh, safety, fuel efficiency, thermal efficiency, and emissions. Okay, so we were uh, we measured a, a, a number of physiologic outcomes, and then there's also a series of questionnaires, which I won't report on today. Uh, but I want to focus today on the cardiopulmonary uh, markers of cardiopulmonary health, including blood pressure, uh, heart rate, peak ex expiratory flow rate, uh, FEV1. And then we also uh, did some measurement of household of kitchen. Um, uh, household air pollution, so indoor uh, uh, measurements, uh, PM2.5 uh, PM and CO, and we measured uh, uh, carboxyhemoglobin as well. We used robust mixed linear models uh, to estimate the, the pre-post changes, so we looked at the raw data and then, of course, tried to model it, uh, adjusting for age, education, and study site, and we uh, found we needed to use these robust methods rather than standard uh, mixed effects models because of, uh, you know, the, the relatively modest sample size uh, leaves you with some, some important outliers that need to be downweighted. So you can see the participant characteristics. So they, they were on average age of about 34, 35 years old. Uh, and I uh, want to highlight the important differences between the two study sites. Uh, uh, you can see that in Turbo, there was uh, higher levels of, of education on average. But the kitchen design uh, was uh, what you might consider better in, in Captagat uh, with, uh, um, uh, importantly, um, uh, more windows uh, in the kitchens in, in Captagat. So these are just the raw numbers to show you. So we had pretty good follow-up from baseline. We had 99 participants, as I said, and then even by six months, we still had 96 participants. So we considered that successful uh, retention of, of the study cohort. Uh, you can see that systolic blood pressure, just again, raw value seems to decrease a little bit. These are healthy women, so none of the values that we saw were outside of sort of clinically normal uh, ranges. And there was, you can also see uh, a decrease in PM2.5 and, um, and carbon monoxide uh, from pre-intervention to post-intervention. Uh, so when we model this, you know, adjusting for age, education, and study site, you can see here the, the absolute change in, in blood pressure, pulse rate, and uh, peak expiratory flow rate. Uh, so you see this statistically significant decrease in systolic blood pressure, uh, a smaller, not quite statistically significant decrease in, blood, in diastolic blood pressure, uh, a modest decrease in, in heart rate, and uh, 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 an improvement in peak expiratory flow rate, but uh, with uh, quite a bit of variability, so, so it wasn't significant. Uh, uh, FEV1 really didn't change at all. Uh, carboxyhemoglobin levels look like they decreased, but again, there's a lot of variability in those data, so, so it didn't quite uh, reach statistical significance. Uh, we did see decreases in household air pollution as measured by PM2.5 and CO. Again, these are the kitchen levels. Uh, and then we can also model the, uh, so this was, the previous slides were just pre-post, and we can also model, okay, how is the change in outcome related to the measured change in household air pollutant levels? So that's what this shows, and, and they're uh, really answering the question, uh, does do those people that saw the biggest reductions in PM2.5 or CO, did they also see the biggest improvements in uh, uh, these physiologic markers? Uh, and, you know, again, the, 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 um, and there's quite a bit of variability in, in the data, but there's some suggestion of a, a, a association between the reduction in carbon monoxide and the reduction in systolic blood pressure and uh, pulse rate. Um, and then peak expiratory flow rate seems to have been related, uh, particularly to PM2.5. Okay, so again, the limitations of this, I, I think, are, are, are straightforward and obvious. Uh, this is not a randomized study. There's no control group. So the main potential for confounding is other things that changed over time. Uh, 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 we've tried to think of what that might be and uh, need to conduct 
perhaps further sensitivity analyses, but the, I, you know, the, the time frame here was pretty short, so I'm not sure what other uh, confounders there would be, but there is that possibility. The sample size, uh, it, you know, despite sort of the difficulty of doing this research, uh, you know, so we considered 100 women uh, a success, but it's still a relatively small sample size, and, and clearly we need bigger studies to, to show uh, more convincing evidence. And these were mostly young and healthy women, so uh, we don't know if the results are generalizable to uh, 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 either older women or uh, women with that would have overt clinical disease. Um, and the characterization of, of household air pollution in, in the kitchens was uh, uh, the best we could do at the time with the resources we had. It's incomplete, and you know we could discuss like many now better ways to do that. On the other hand, this is a, a pre-post design it, uh, uh, the, you know, where individual level factors are unlikely to be a confounder if they're stable over time. Uh, we did have repeated longitudinal measurements of uh, both the health outcomes and, and these markers of exposure. And importantly, the stove was well adapted, uh, was, was designed by the local population, so well accepted by the local population. Um, so in conclusion, uh, among these healthy women in two rural communities, uh, we saw some evidence of lower systolic blood pressure after six months uh, following a stove intervention. Uh, perhaps modestly lower levels of diastolic blood pressure, uh, very small changes actually in, respiratory, in the markers of respiratory health, uh, and these changes were accompanied by reductions in PM2.5 and CO, potentially carboxyhemoglobin. Uh, the results did vary a little bit by village, so the blood pressure results were stronger in uh, Turbo than in Captagat, and again, remember that was where they had less ventilation in the kitchen, so maybe, uh, uh, and again, so these interventions are so located specific, uh, uh, maybe it's in, in particularly in that setting uh, that this particular intervention would be most uh, helpful. Uh, so with that, thank you. Happy to take questions.